Houston Texans, one of the most surprising teams in the NFL, and they are going up against the New York Jets. And this matchup just makes you realize how far apart these two franchises are just like that. If you're new to the channel, we make videos for teams that don't get the love nationally like they should. So on this channel, you won't see any Cowboys coverage. That's that's for sure. We know that we're all about the teams that just they just don't get the love. They get ignored by the national media. Houston Texans being one of those teams in the AFC doing things that nobody expected except for us. We were calling this all summer and into the into the uh, preseason and as the season went on. So here's the here's why the Houston Texans are laughing at the Jets. It's because the Jets announced that Zach Wilson will be the starter against the Houston Texans. And it's amazing because you've got two different franchises here. One that has CJ Stroud and one that doesn't and has Zach Wilson. And look how different life is. I mean, it's crazy. So remember what the Jets are doing. This is how bad Zach Wilson is. Zach gives us our best chance to win. What a classic line that is just a scapegoat line because, yes, he does give you your best chance out of the quarterbacks that you have because, remember, Tim Boyle comes in. They bench him for Tim Boyle, and we're Detroit Lions fans, by the way, so we had Tim Boyle for a, for a season, and – I'm telling you, it was so incredibly bad that you're just kind of wondering to yourself, what what am I missing here? Because it's like I'm a I'm a I mean I'm a pretty observant guy. I can watch. I'm a fan. I can watch and see good quarterback play. He's terrible. Yet he's on an NFL roster, so it's like, well, he must not be that bad, right? You saw him in the preseason, some different things. He was so bad that he was the backup for the Lions all through training camp, and then at at the end where we do cuts, they just cut him and we had Jared Goff and that was it. And we're like, we'll find somebody else off the street that hasn't even been in our system rather than take Tim Boyle. So Tim Boyle comes in for Zach Wilson. They're like, Wilson, you're so bad. We have to try Tim Boyle. Tim Boyle comes in and gets cut a couple days later. He's so bad. So it's like, I guess we'll go back to Zach Wilson. Like, I don't even know. The Boyle experiment failed miserably, leading to him being straight up released. Oh, my gosh. And um, of the conversation, Robert Sala said it was good. He's fired up. Like I said Monday, he came into my office. He wants the ball. He's excited about getting this opportunity. So just think about that. Um, they went to a guy that got cut from multiple teams, was going to just – they, and then he plays, and they're like, dude, you're so bad. We're going to cut you. So I guess we'll go back. The Zach Wilson, I mean, look at the difference. And we'll get to C.J. Stroud here in just a second. But and, and why this is huge news for the Texans, by the way. The number two overall pick has struggled to move the ball after taking the reins from Aaron Rodgers. Between the brief flashes of playmaking, the 24-year-old pass rusher struggled to make the right reads, misses too many easy tosses, displayed crumbling pocket presence, and at time appeared reluctant to pull the trigger. Compare that to C.J. Stroud, and what a difference. You've got a guy that makes the right reads. He hits the layup throws. Like That is what you just take for granted with Stroud. It's so natural, so easy. Pocket presence, amazing with Stroud. And at times, reluctant to pull the trigger, not at all. This dude's just slinging it out there, and I love it. And for a rookie to be that confident, and not even really have the, the turnover numbers to to back it up, right? So it's like, because, you know, remember Peyton Manning, all these guys, these legends, their first couple of years, they're out there slinging it, but it's getting intercepted. Stroud's just like solid as ever, and, and it's so good. So you got New York sitting at four and eight. Oh, my gosh. Wilson will have the next five weeks to pilot a career. Pilot a careening jet that hopes to avoid gruesome crash at the end of 22 through season. So here's the deal. The Texans, it's it's like, all right, Texans, if you are a team that we think you are and can be a playoff team, then you got to beat the Jets. And it's not going to be easy. The Jets' defense is great. They're going to make it hard. So just don't turn the ball over too much and go win this game. 
Then they've got the Titans. Again, these are NFL teams, so there's never any easy game or chalk it up as a win. But I think as you get down to the stretch run of five weeks, you're looking, man, do we have just manageable games? Because everybody's banged up. What what do we have? So Titans, Browns don't have their quarterback. Titans again, and then Colts. That's all you can ask for if you're a Texans fan. You've done the hard work, and there's five weeks left of manageable football. I mean, shout out to shout out to the Texans. Love what they're doing and what they've done so far. So what a difference. Two quarterbacks, completely different, makes their franchises different, their coaches different, the play calling, the confidence. Everything is different when you have the quarterback. So and it, it just you, you just realize, and it's easy to take it for granted when you have a quarterback, but when you go up against a team that doesn't and is really struggling, it's like, man, we got if you're a Texans fan, we got the coach, we got the quarterback. Sky's the limit from here on out as we continue to build this thing. But in the meantime, who knows? Let's go make the playoffs and see what happens. So let me know your thoughts in the comments on this one, and we'll see all of you on the next one.